Hello again, Paul Morrison here with you to talk about the lockdown and some tips for getting through lockdown. It's a very difficult, unusual time for all of us and I cover some tips with you in this video and the next video coming up on how to get through that little bit better with the whole thing because it's a very, very strange time for all of us. So one of the first things to do is to have a structure in your day. So to have certain things at certain times during the day. Otherwise your day ends up as a big just blob with nothing happening at different times. And we know like people are working from home sometimes or not in some cases, but it's important to build that structure back into your day. So you have a morning structure, things you do in the morning time, things in the afternoon and things at night. So you build in that structure. And you have a marking time between each structure during the day. So say some people are working, I always get them to when they finish their work, get to their front door and just take a breath. If you have no commuting to do anymore, you're not driving back home from work or to get on a bus or a train back home from work. So just to break that up, is really good. So go to your door, take a breath, you can get a little walk around the block if you can, and then back into the house again. So you're punctuating the day, and there's a structure there in the day for you. So that structure is very, very important as well. Also, if you're not doing that, so you're not working from home, it's also good then to build a structure into your day by having things you do in the morning. So in the morning time, you have stuff to do. You might have to clear up from the day before, you might have to get some clothes washed or dishes done or something, or prepare your lunch, then get your lunch done. So you have that at different times during the day and structure that day as much as you can. That gives a great shape and a great sense to your day. Otherwise, you get lost in a big, big blob of time, as I said, and that's not good for our mental health or physical health either. Another good tip in the is to stay in touch with nature. Nature is a brilliant thing to be in touch with. Even a tiny pot on your kitchen window with something growing in it, or a pot plant in the house, or if you've got a garden, spending time in there. We know from research, even looking at a picture of trees, of greenery, of nature, of rivers in a forest, can bring a person's stress levels right down, and cortisol levels in their bloods right down straight away, just from looking at a picture of nature. So looking at a picture can do that to you, then surely being in nature can do the same thing not even better for you. So spending time there doing that kind of thing, working, tending with your plant in the kitchen window, as I said, or a time in your garden. And then one thing, if you can get yourself into a park, so we're here in Longford, we're in, in the, with the mall there, get there, have a walk in the park, you're surrounded by trees, by nature, by birds, by water, all this stuff there, really good for your mental, mental health. And also, if you can, not this time of the year, it's quite, quite dry weather this time of the year, it's not very good at all, but if you can during the summer sometime, Get a quiet corner in the park somewhere and take off your socks and your shoes, just that much, more than that, just socks and shoes, and just walk for a second or a few minutes on the grass. That's a wonderfully grounding, de-stressing thing to do, bare feet on grass. It's a lovely sensation for your body. It calms things down greatly for you and livens you up in all sorts of ways. Just do that stuff when you can, when the weather's a bit more clement for that kind of stuff, and just shoes and socks. That's all you need to take off. No one will see you, no one will mind. But if you have a back garden yourself, you can do it yourself in the back garden, then do that as well if you can. Or your front garden, if need be, do it there as well. Just walk for a few minutes on grass. Really good thing. That's a link with nature. Keep that together. That's a really good way also to help you to get through lockdown as well. Another thing to do is communication. Talking to people. It can be a very lonely time for people. And in another video, I'll talk about loneliness and dealing with that and handling that. That's a different topic. But just keeping the links open with family, with friends, anybody you can, keeping in touch with those is really important. And all we have these days are our computers, our laptops, our phones and so on, because face-to-face -face stuff isn't happening as much now as it would have in the past. So just keeping that link open is very important. And you don't know what that call to somebody will, will do for them. It'll brighten the day up in all sorts of ways. Just ringing somebody, talking to them, will brighten them in all sorts of great ways. We'll see more of that in another video coming up. But it's that link with people. We are social beings. We're meant to be in a clump together. Some people say, no, I want to live on an island on my own. Yeah, for a half an hour maybe. But then they get lonely, want some people around them. And we have that, that social kind of buzz we need right, with people all the time around us. And so getting that is important as well in our lives. So keep that link open and then when you go for your walk during the day, if you do go for a walk during the day, you'll see people along the way and just say hello to them. You mightn't even know them, but just say hello. We're, kind of, we're all in this together, this sort of strange thing together. So just a nod to them or hello to them if you can along the way. That again will brighten them up and brighten you up also and lifts the mood in all sorts of ways. Also having time for yourself during the day, that's important. Some people have 
a lot of time for themselves. They're on their own in the house and so time with other people is important to them. But sometimes some people have a life whereby all their time is given over to other people and their needs and what they want. They're constantly on duty all the time for other people. So again, a balance on that, time for yourself during the day. That self and other balance is important. So you may have to have that, that people need more time from you or you need more time for yourself. Getting a balance on that whenever you can is important. And also a work and a leisure balance. If you're working from home as well, you might have a time you start work, then you finish work at a certain time. It's important to mark those times, as I said. So get to your front door, get a bit of air, get back in again so you start your home life. And then you start work the next morning or the next day when that starts again. You start that by going to your front door, taking a breath of air, getting back in and starting your work. So it's marked. You have these times marked. And you have a balance on that between work time and play time. So that home does not become just work, work, work. Now in some houses, because of space constraints and so on, workspace is home space and all this type of thing. So you need to have that, that structure I mentioned before and that punctuation between the work time and the home time even more strict. Otherwise you get totally worn out just being in your own living space or your own kitchen or whatever it is. You get totally worn out by that. And another thing people find very, very helpful is to keep a journal a little diary if you have the time for that. It's a really good thing to do because you can write down what happened during the day, what you plan to do the next day, and that again helps to structure during the day. And it's great then to look back at that in a few months' time and see what you were at, what you were worried about, what was happening, what you were doing, what you were engaged in, what your projects were, and how different life is now. We can often sense that as we're not moving forward through life, but when you have a little journal like that, that shows you, yes, Things have moved on from me. I'm not worried about that anymore. That was way back in the past. Now that's, that's gone. And these things can intrude, these kind of worries can intrude in your life in all sorts of ways. Writing them down, as we've seen before in a previous video, is a great way to deal with those things also and get them out of your system. So a journal, something small, brief, just what happened during the day, what the plan for tomorrow is, and just look back on that in a few weeks' time. That also helps to put a structure on the day, but it also helps then to settle things down as you're going to bed that night. Your journal those stuffs, those, those kind of things, you close the book and then ah, relax and get ready for bed. That, that closes down that part of the day. More structure. Very, very helpful. Also a great thing to do is to practice kindness every day if you can with somebody. People need some kind of kindness every day. I'll deal with that in more detail in another video. But just having some kindness around you and being kind to people, people being kind to you. And the whole COVID thing has brought out this a lot in people. And we hear about the negative stuff all the time. But in parallel with that, a lot of kindness has been shown, a lot of good things are happening, and we often don't hear enough about those things. So if you can, in some way, be kind to someone. Even a phone call, a text message for someone during the day to see how things are going, what's happening, how is life with you, are you okay, did you get over that dose you had or whatever. Those sort of simple little things. It might even cost you a penny, but that simple little thing will brighten somebody else's day up. And one really important thing as well, which I'll talk about in another video as well in more detail, is just to have a news fast during the day. Because we hear all this really awful news and there's numbers and there's COVID things and all this negative, negative stuff in the news every day. It's important to get your news in the morning and then leave it. Don't be getting the news every single hour because it's the same thing. And we know repetition gets stuff right inside you. And the teacher will tell you that. You repeat things over and over again and children learn stuff very, very quickly that way once it's repeated all the time. And the same with adults. You repeat things over and over and it gets right in there. So news just in the middle of the day in the morning, maybe in the evening, and that's it. And then during the day, you'll do things, part of your structure, you might read stuff. Some great things to be read. I'm in the library here now. And the whole library offers great stuff online, which you can get at using BorrowBox. A great time there. Also the books and reading and stuff you can do. Brilliant stuff to do. Get your mind off that negative, negative news. You'll get it in the morning and in the evening, and that's enough. But don't be getting it during the day. Now there's some tips to start you off with. You're doing your, you're getting through the whole lockdown thing. Keeping a structure on the day, very, very important as well, I mentioned before. Staying in touch with people, uh, communicating with people as well. I mean, in touch with nature. Again, get that nature thing, get that pot plant, even buy a herb in, in the shop there, bring it home and tend to that in your kitchen window. All those things, really good for a structure during the day and making sense and meaning in this weird, strange time we have. Time for yourself during the day and time for others. And that work, leisure, balance important stuff. I will deal with those in more detail in later videos. In the meantime, stay well, stay happy, and we'll talk to you again soon.